What's up, everybody? Welcome to the 2021 MPA Quad Drum Beginner Masterclass uh, Clinic, if you will. Uh, hope everybody's doing well. Just want to start out with a quick uh, thank you to the University of Wisconsin Eau, Eau Claire for letting me use these drums. Looking pretty sweet. Um, and then also, shout out to Vlad Boz for asking me to do this. So, thank you to those guys. Um, so, this clinic is the beginner quad clinic for the MPA Day Percussion, like I said. Um, this is for anyone who is, you know, a beginner quad player, maybe been playing for a year or two. Also, anyone who has never played quads before and has an interest into playing quads. Um, kind of what I'm going to go through is going to be the stuff I would teach my students on their first day of quads to kind of set up a fundamental basis. And uh, that's everything that we talk about today would be stuff I'll, I would reference and I would use to teach them and clean down the line. So quick disclaimer. Um, everything I say works for me and I've developed my own approach. Um, if anything contradicts what your instructor has told you, um, definitely just go with your instructor. Um, there's a lot of different, uh, mindsets and, um, schools of thought when it comes to marching percussion and quads. Um, so yeah, just have an open mind, but make sure if anything contradicts what I say, go with your instructor. Sweet. Let's rock. All right, to get started, it's super important that we make sure the gear is adjusted to the right height. So you see here, um, my set of quads is adjusted right about to like where my belt would go, like right, right under my belt, my belt buckle. That works for me. Um, everybody's like height and arm length is a lot different, um, but a good starting spot is just below where that belt would sit. Um, as far as grip. Um, I like to use an American grip. Um, German grip is with your hands turned completely over and your hands are at a 90 degree angle like this. Um, French grip would be like this with your thumbs up. Um, you see a lot of quad, some quad drummers play with the thumbs up approach. I like to think somewhere, American somewhere in between. So we have Germans here, French is here. I like to uh, think about using the grip in between because both grips, German and French, have uh, benefits, you know, you kind of got the French grip with the the finger finesse um, and that's where you're gonna get a little bit of your uh, sound quality from and The German grip has just a lot of power and wrist rotation. So I like the American grip because it's a good balance between uh, Wrist finger and arm, right? Cool So what we want to think about in the American grip is if we were to look down the elbow to the tip of the bead here I don't know if you can see that, but we want to look for pretty much a straight line all the way through. A good way to find this is if you just pretend to throw your stick and freeze and you look down the stick, a lot of times it's going to be straight. So just think nice and natural. Don't overthink it. Um, and as far as uh, the, how we want our wrist orientated, um, we want to think about having a neutral hand. So just if we were to like relax our hand down by our side and you look at the side, right it's not bent in any weird angle i just it's just neutral it's just chilling straight line from here to here um there's i'm not on top i'm not underneath it's just nice and neutral and then the stick goes in the hand uh cool so from there let's talk about home base um, home base is kind of just where we're going to start um any exercise or whenever we're not playing we're going to go back to home base um i like to think about Pretty much, if you had two little laser pointers and you pointed them, they wouldn't quite be parallel, but they'd intersect really far, like, you know, 100 yards, 200 yards down the line. So pr we're not straightforward. We're just nice and naturally in. Um, another way to find this angle is if you just let your hands fall by your side and just find some nice good posture and just doggy paw, bend your, bend your arms up like this, that's where you want your drums to be. So some people might be a little bit wider. Some people might be a little bit narrower, right? It's we're, Everybody's different, so it's going to be a little bit different for everyone. But just relax your arms, get a good posture, and bend those arms up just from the elbows, not moving anything else. And then put your sticks in your hands. And what you'll notice is your home base position isn't going to be necessarily in the center of the drum here. It's going to be more towards the outside. And... Um, we'll get into this next, talking about zones. But basically, we're going to think about if this was a clock, we'd be at like 7 or 8 o'clock on our left hand, um, and then like 
like five, four or five o'clock ish on your right hand. So it should look like this. Just take a quick look about an inch, inch and a half away, two inches away from the rim. Sweet. Uh, next, we're going to talk about playing zones. And I lied. We're actually not going to talk about playing zones yet. We're going to talk about the full stroke. And I want to talk about the full stroke because it's just a basic marching percussion and just percussion in general skill set. Um, we, we as percussionists and drummers need to be able to just bounce the stick and utilize rebound. Um, and that goes for quads or anything else. Like, make sure you have a solid fundamental um, skill set and like you're just solid on a single surface um, before we're trying all these crazy rounds on the drums. Cool. So the way we're going to break this down, a lot of people just think about the full stroke as one motion. Um, I like to actually break it up into two motions. Um, this is getting a little specific, but like I said, it's super important to have a solid fundamental um, skill set um, and just be really solid technically. So we're going to start out, and I like to think about having a middle finger fulcrum. So if you have Vic Firth sticks, I just put my thumb on the American flag, or that's about one third up the stick. And then I kind of nest it in to my middle finger, the second digit like this. And the first half of the full stroke, you might want to back up from your drums to do this. Do it on the Spock or the three drum or just a single pad. Because if you do it up here, you might hit some, hit some stuff over here. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to start with that nice neutral hand position like we talked about in American grip. And we're just going to turn our wrist up and add just a little bit of arm. A little bit of arm so that stick is uh, it's vertical right so from here I'm thinking about I'm just gonna throw the stick down and I'm gonna let the stick pivot on my fulcrum and it's just gonna bounce back up so I'll just demonstrate so basically I'm ending with my hand open and I'm letting that stick pivot up cool so we'll try that again and my hands open here right and that's where we want to start. And make sure that stick is just pivoting on that fulcrum naturally. So again, we're starting at the top. Vertical stick. Full wrist rotation. Close back of the hand. A little bit of arm. And right, that stick's bouncing up all by itself. Just like that. Cool. Now, I actually just did it. But the second half of the full stroke is just the lift, right? So we're going to basically try to keep the stick at the same angle. And close our hand around the stick and start back in this starting position in the up position. So we have the first part, which is the down. And then we just take, try to keep maintain this vertical angle, rotate our wrist and close our hands back around. So we have two. So if we were to put it in time to quarter notes, we could try it like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Four, two, four, right? And then basically what we're going to do is just take that same sensation in our hand and just combine it, right? So we're going to morph it into one motion like a lot of people break down the full stroke. So And this should feel super effortless. The stick should be doing all the work. And basically what we're doing is right when we get to that first half, we're just instantly picking the stick back up. All right. So that's basically um, the full stroke. Cool. So we're going to apply this full stroke to a quick little exercise. And it goes like this. So we're going to play two whole notes. And then we're going to play four half notes, eight quarter notes, and 16 eighth notes. So it's basically two bars of each note value. So it goes like this. One, two, three, four. And then we'll repeat it off the left. So um, I'm going to record it separately with a metronome. And uh, how about let's play along with that, all right? Here we go. One, two, one, 
two, ready, go. Three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, Sweet. Cool. So now let's talk about now that we have a nice full stroke. Um, kind of figured out let's apply that full stroke that uh, to an exercise so we're basically it's going to be an eights like exercise i'm sure you all know some sort of eights um so as far as like motion around the drums right if we start from our home base um if i want to play on drum one which is right here um and i'm at home base my right hand that's already on drum one isn't going to move we're just going to move over and it's just important um that the beads are equidistant from the rim um about you know an inch and a half to two inches um and you'll be able to hear it so the big thing i just say is like use your ears like um i'll, I'll demonstrate so here's like right in the center of the drum head uh, of drum three here you kind of have a thuddy um a kind of super articulate sound but it doesn't sound great and if i go all the way to the bearing edge here Get a lot of tone but it's very thin and hollow so if you find somewhere a little bit outside of the bearing edge like i said about an inch and a half to two inches you're going to find a good mix of articulation and attack mixed with the tone which is what we're going for with the quads um so here is the correct zone so let's see if you can hear a difference you still get that pop that we get when we play in the center with a little bit nicer tone like we do when we play on the edge we meld those together and we get a happy medium. And that goes for every drum on the set of quads. So if I play in the center of drum one, and all the way at the bearing edge, and Goldilocks it, right? And it, it's a little bit more evident on the bigger drums. Um, and that actually uh, goes for, if you have an 8-inch Spock, that goes for that as well. I like to play just a little bit um, off-center. Um, some people play in the center. Um, I just think there is a little bit of a tone that you can get with playing up just a little bit. And then as far as the 6-inch Spock, if, uh, some of you might just have the 1-inch 6 Spock. Uh, I just play right in the center of that. There's not a lot of tone. It's kind of just a, it's an attack drum, right? So... That being said, let's talk about moving around the drums now. Um, so basically, moving across the drums, we're going to move in this ergonomic kind of windshield wiper motion, right? So when I'm over here on drum four, which is to my left, um, I'm thinking about my left hand being kind of pointed out like this. Like if someone were to tie a rope around my body, I would only be able to pivot from the, my elbow here, right? So that's kind of how we're going to get to the outside drums. And then to play over here with that right hand, we're just going to rotate it, right? And it's going to be, if we were talking like clock, like on a clock, um, you know, the left hand might be around maybe a one o'clock and the right hand is going to be around three. And then your body just kind of naturally follows this arc, right? So it just mirrors itself on the other side, right? And then we go back to this box. Um, when you have one, it's a little bit easier because there's less uh, forward and back motion needed. Um, so you can kind of just come in. Uh, one habit I see a lot of people do is they like to kick the elbows out to get back to the Spocks. Um, just make sure you're pulling back from the elbows regardless if you have one or two Spocks. So pull back from the elbows, not out, right? Because that's just a lot more extra motion. We don't want to move too much from up here. We want to get a lot of our lot of, lot of motion from, from the elbow this way. Cool? So we're going to play a quick little zone eights exercise uh, primer. So we're just going to figure out, kind of play eight and eight on each drum to figure out how that feels. Cool? So it's going to be eight off the right, eight off the left on the four drum. We're going to move to the two, eight and eight. 
We're going to pull back to the Spock. If you have one Spock, just go to one Spock. If you have two, go to your 8-inch Spock. Or if you have two 6-inch Spocks, just go to your left Spock. Then we're going to go to the right Spock. We're going to move up to the one drum. And we're going to move over to the three drum. Eight and eight on all the drums and then release there. And that will be that. So I'll record a play along. Get your drums. Get your drum pad out. If you don't have one, just imagine it. Cool? Here we go. And one, two, one, two, ready, go. So the next topic we're going to discuss is just a little bit more of a complex motion around the drums, and we're going to try to hit every sort of combination of drum-to-drum -drum motion that we can through a exercise. This is called Zone 8s. This is by a quad player named Jeremy Summers, and it was also expanded upon by Joe Fow. Um, and basically, we're going to take that nice legato eighth note idea and we're going to take it through a bunch of permutations or like whatever, like if you if you want to call it that, motions between each drum. Cool? So we're going to break it down part by part, um, and we'll go from there. Cool? So it's going to start off, you have the sheet music there. It's going to sh start off with just a bar of check eighth notes on the right hand. So cool. And what's not notated there um, is I actually moved zones. Um, for this exercise. So, like I said before, um, as long as the bead's equidistant from the rim, so if I hit an inch off here, if your drums are in tune, you're safe to hit uh, two inches off the rims right here, right? So this is what's called the scrape zone, and when we're playing quads, um, we just want to think about moving as efficiently as possible because we not only have to worry about the up and down motion, but we need to worry about side to side motion. So we want to not waste any of that side to side motion. So if you've seen the second bar there, uh, it goes from drum one to drum, or sorry, drum two to drum one for a bar. So, right. And, you know, there's a lot of different ways I could play it. I could pl theoretically play it like this. But that's just a lot of wasted motion. So I just think whenever you're moving from drum to drum, think about the most ergonomic path, the shortest distance to travel, which happens to be from here to here. So what we're going to do on that eighth note of that first bar, five, six, seven, eight, we're going to come up here and play that part. And then we have on the eighth note of the play, the split part, we're just going to go eight, one, because we go back into a bar check. Uh, and that will go like this. So we'll play uh, two bars here. So that next bar is just another check, and then we go into uh, drums. We go to drum three, into drum one. Cool, so we're moving out and right. We're just moving from the elbow, not too much motion, just nice, subtle motion. We're not moving out like this, right? We don't want to do this. Just think, like if you had a, a rope tied around your chest and your arms, you could only rotate from here. Cool. So we have that bar check, and then we're going to go three to one. I'll play the check and the next bar. And basically what I'm thinking about is I'm picking my zone, right? I'm finding that most ergonomic zone. And basically I'm thinking about the top of the stroke splitting the distance. So from these two drums to these and these two drums, um, the distance is pretty short. But basically now we're going to get into bigger leaps. Um, so the next one goes from drum two to drum three. So basically we want to think about the top of that full stroke being here. And one common thing that starts to happen as the side to side motion gets bigger, um, people kind of like to like slash at the drum, right? Just to get there quicker, but make sure, you know, do, do the first thing first, right? Make sure you're playing a good full stroke straight into the head, 
and then moving, right? It should be kind of a check mark. It should go straight down and then over. We don't want, right? Because that's just going to create bad sounds and we're going to hit rims like I just did there. Um, a lot of uh, people have trouble hitting rims because they're not just going straight up and down. So straight up and down. Cool. So I'll play the check and then the next bar. So like the next two bars, it's going to go drum two to drum three. Cool. back on the one for the check um, and yeah it's just a nice smooth motion there's nothing shouldn't be anything too jerky just nice back and forth and use that motion of the rebound to move right it's not you shouldn't be pulling the stick just just guide that rebound to that next spot cool and then the next we have uh, is we haven't talked about crosses yet but we have drums four to drums three. So basically this version is gonna involve a cross. Um, and if you look in the music, there's a little parenthesis around drum four, or a little ghost note. Um, that's the way I like to indicate crosses. So that's when your stick's gonna cross. Um, and all you need to know about crosses, especially for this one, as long as your right hand, or your left hand, sorry, your tacit hand is at home base, um, and it's angled into the head just a little bit, kind of like a good home base, right? You shouldn't have any problem hitting the stick. You're going to kind of have to Jedi mind trick yourself. It's going to feel weird. You're going to see that stick there, and you're going to be all nervous and want to go like this. If you just trust yourself, if you have a neutral arm and the stick's angled just a little bit down, and we reach a little bit, push this way across. Oop, well, there we go. You're not going to hit the, you're not going to hit your stick. So just like spend some time and just play a bunch of notes. And like also think about if you're wearing the drum, like making sure your shoulders aren't turning from side to side because when the drums are on, they're going to do that. So just spend some time and figure out like how you need to play in order to get just like if you were to play a full stroke on a drum pad, right? That exact stroke, but over here shouldn't be the same. Um, one tendency when people reach over is they like to turn their hand over like this. They go more of a French grip. Um, for consistency sake, we want to make sure our hand is the same angle regardless of where we are around the drums. Because um, if you think about, again, if you're playing on a single surface and your grip was changing like That would look ridiculous like nobody would drum like that right if i were to play eighth notes you're not gonna go, right? you're gonna go. Right. And that that that's exactly how you need to approach the drums cool so we're gonna start on that bar of check and then we're gonna go four three four three four three and then we're gonna release with the left hand on drum two so here it is Sweet. Uh, and you heard a few times, I actually got a little bit towards the center. So that's a common thing when you're pushing across, is to get the more of the center of the head. Kind of get this whipping motion going. You just want to think, full stroke here, move, full stroke here. So all together, um, let's play just off the right, um, just the first, yeah, the first part of zone eight. So here we go. One, two, one, two, ready, go. So the next part of the exercise is literally just going to mirror off the left. So all of your checks are going to be on drum two. Um, so you have the check on drum two, and then it's going to go um, on five, six, seven, eight. We're going to push to that sweep zone, uh, and then we have one, two, seven, eight. Back at home base, bar of check. Uh, shoot, eight, and then we have uh, four to three. Or four to two. We have a bar of check. And then we have.
have drums one to four. Guard check. Uh, three to four. Release on the one drum with a sort of tag towards the end. Um, it's going to go like this. Uh, it's going to be one bar of check, and then it's going to go through each of those variations, but without the check in between. So we have. Cool. And we have actually a little bit of addition. We're going to go from the Spock, the right Spock. Or if you have one, just from the Spock to the three drum. And then that's going to mirror again off the left. And we're just going to release on the one drum. So uh, I'm going to make a play along real quick. We're going to play through the whole thing. Um, feel free to join along. We're going to dive a little bit deeper, deeper into the concept of uh, just crossing in general. Um, luckily, we already know the exercise for the crosses. We're just going to take that zone eights exercise we just did. And we're actually, we're literally going to read it down the same. Um, you have the music there, but it's the same exercise. We're just starting off the left, and we're playing the same arounds, but just mirrored. Does that make sense? So just to dive a little bit more into talking about how we want to think about scrapes, um, the way I would like to think about them is just, if you're going to play with your hand down and play in good zones, just put your hand at home base and it will be fine. It will be out of the way. So basically, just play as if the, the hand isn't there. You, then you just kind of got to Jedi mind trick yourself again into thinking like my hand is not there, right? Practice maybe doing something like this. That, that tacit hand in and out and just try to have your sound sit, stay the same. Um, but to break down this uh, version B, if you will, um, Joe Fowl, this is the, he thought of this, brilliant, um, to take this zone eights and just reverse it. Um, so yeah, we're basically starting on the left, but the check's going to be on drum one. And we have two to one. Barf check. We have the cross because we're going to go over to drum three to one. And then check. Two to three. Thinking about that scrape zone, right? And then we're back. Check. Uh, and then we have. And then one difference here, we're just going to play a Spock drum to get our hand out of the way because we're going to release on the drum two. So we have. And then we're going to mirror that, the left hand part of version, the first part we played, just off the right. So we're 
drum four. Check. Drum one. Check. Three to four. And then on the eighth note there, we're going to hit the Spock on the right side. And release on the one. And this is sort of that recap version. So we have uh, same idea, right? So I'll record one full rep of that. Um, I encourage you to play along. Uh, if the tempo's too fast, like obviously just slow it down and really understand the exercise. Make sure you're playing with good technique. about some scrape ideas and how we can break those down and just a little bit little bit of an intro into scrapes so to get started like uh, I said with the full stroke going into eights um, scrapes are basically a double stroke where you're gonna move drums from the first to second double stroke um, and it's something unique to quads right it's kind of the cool flashy thing that we do um, but we need to make sure we have a solid foundation when we're approaching these double strokes um, because if you have a bad double stroke quality, like it's not going to sound cool, not going to look cool. Um, yeah, so basically we're going to break some double strokes down real quick, um, and then we'll get into the exercise. So the way I like to think about um, one technique to play doubles is I actually like to think about starting with the first half of the full stroke, which is here, where I let the stick come up and my hand open. And the only thing that's going to be different from the full stroke to the double stroke is instead of just closing my hand and bringing it up, I'm actually going to use my wrist and fingers to play a note on the way up. So we're going to push down, right, and then pull. It's a sort of a push-pull idea, right? And you can kind of think like three, four. So one, two, three. Kind of slow, fast, slow, and kind of feel how that feels, right? Right, so wrist and finger on that second note. Um, yeah, so basically that's the way I like to approach kind of a medium kind of double double stroke. There's obviously the super, super slow double strokes. You can just wrist them out, right? Two wrist strokes. Uh, and then for some faster doubles, you're maybe you're going to need some front of the hand fulcrum and a little bit of arm with wrist support. Um, I recommend not taking scrapes that fast at first, um, just like anything. You need to start slow and progressively overload until your your muscles can catch keep up. So um, we're going to kind of use that medium push-pull double stroke for today. Um, so the exercise is going to go like this. Um, we're going to go over home base. And it's going to be a bar of 16th notes as the check. So, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. 
And basically, what we're going to go from here, we might play it a little bit slower. Um, but it's the same concept as, as when we're playing eights um, from drum to drum, right? We want to think as uh, efficient as possible. We don't want to go right the least amount of motion possible. And we want to think about making sure that the second note is just as strong as it is when we play it on one note. A lot of times, people, again, they kind of like to chop when they play scrapes. So they kind of do like this thing, this thing. We want to make sure it's straight into the head, we move, and it's back into the head, right? Cool. So that's what I'm doing right here on my right hand is an outward scrape. So if I do it on my left, it's a double stroke motion, starting on one drum, moving to the next. Nice and relaxed, good, full sound. Um, and then basically the other thing you have is an in inward stro uh, scrape. What a lot of people like to do, they tend to kind of do that sort of thing. But just make sure it's just like play a note, move, play a note straight into the head. Um, I don't like to think about this like, I like to say, think about hammering a nail. Like not necessarily in the way you're playing, but like if you're going to hammer a nail, it needs to go straight into the head. If you're sw like swiping at it, you're going to miss the nail and you're going to bend it and you're going to hit your finger and then you can't drum, right? So just think about hammering the nail and again not necessarily as far as like whacking it but just the idea of going straight into the head making a good sound hammer move hammer like a relaxed sort of hammer approach so we have outward scrapes like that we have inward scrapes so back to the exercise we're going to go a bar of check on drums one and two over home base. And then we're going to start with right hand outward scrapes. For a bar. And then we're going to check it again, making sure we have a nice double stroke. And then a bar of outward scrapes off the left. Again, straight into the head, straight into the head, nice smooth motion. The next bar is going to go like this, or the next, yeah, it's just going to be a check, and then we're going to put the outward scrapes together. So uh, I'll put two bars, the check and the part. Cool? So out, 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 out. And again, with this scrape stuff, and anytime you're playing quads, like uh, you can notice I'm watching my playing zones right now, and there's a time and a place, um, obviously, like when you're warming up in the lot, trying to get in the zone um, for a show, that's not the time to figure out your zones. But when you're practicing at home, I, I like look at your hands and be deliberate and very decisive. Like Choose, be deliberate with your playing zones. Um, and that's going to just pay off a ton because you'll build up good muscle memory. And you won't need to look at your hands, but just be deliberate right away, right? So make sure you're checking your zones out. Um, if you want to like tape your zones and make sure you don't go out a certain spot, that's a good way to practice. But also just just be deliberate. Cool. So the next uh, part, it's gonna we're gonna basically repeat that, but we're gonna repeat it with inward scrapes. So it's gonna be a bar check, bar of in on the right, and then we're gonna check. inward on the left right and then a bar of check and then we have both hands in in cool so that's basically a super brief uh, basic exercise you can do to warm up your scrapes um, you can move this concept around um, by just having a different home base, if you will, for the exercise. So you could play all of your check on drums two, or on drum two, and then you could just go out, right? And that would just be to the next drum. So it would be, that would be your out scrapes, and that would be your inward scrapes, right? Uh, you could also just do with the check all on drum one, and that's... You know what I mean? You can just do that. Um, you can start on the Spox and have your check be here. Just get creative.
creative with it and just try to figure out every sort of combo of scrapes um, throughout all of this and uh, have some fun with it. Yeah, in closing, that's basically my my approach to quad drumming, um, the beginner quad drums. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My email is jaj1751 at gmail.com. That's the year I was born. Seven, no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so hopefully you got something out of this, uh, and thanks for coming. Thank you.